Some of you might not have learned about radians in great detail in school, so this might seem like really intense and advanced for you, but it's, it's really not. We First of all, we were told how to convert between these two things by the reference chart, so I'll get to that in a second. This question does have this twist, though, where we have two angle measures in radians, and we're trying to kind of add them together, right? It's angle R um, is being compared to angle T, and the measure of T is that amount greater than R. So basically we want to add that on. So hopefully that makes sense that we're really just taking this 2 pi on 3 and adding in the 5 pi on 12. Now that again is not as scary as it looks because literally what we're just being asked to do here is add two fractions. So it doesn't really matter that the pi is involved, ignore that. How do you add fractions? Simple question, we need to get common denominators. So the common denominator here would be 12, so we're gonna multiply the first one by four over four to, to change it. So this is really gonna become eight pi on 12 plus five pi on 12, which is 13, oops, 13 pi over 12. So that is the measure of angle T, okay? So that's kind of like my answer. Now, that's not an answer because they want us to convert that to degrees. Luckily, we know how to do that. Um, for some of you, you might have learned the conversion that we just put a 180 in place of the pi and then solve. So we can, we can do that. Let me show you how that would work. We would take the um, 13 pi over 12 and just turn that into 13 times 180 over 12. And here my regular old calculator would take over. 13 times 180 is 2340. And then divide that by 12 and we get 195, choice C. And that, that is the answer. Now, I think for some of you that might be confusing. Maybe that, that like, why does that work? It's, it bothers you a little bit or you just have trouble remembering it. Um, there's also the potential where that won't work because sometimes we're given radian measures that don't involve a pi. Like there's nothing saying that every radian measurement has to involve a pi. We might need to convert it in some other way. So the, the thing that's foolproof is um, in the reference chart, they tell us that the number of degrees of arc in a circle is 360 and the number of radians of arc in a circle is two pi. So that's a conversion and that's, that's kind of like a ratio that then we can use to our advantage. So what I would do here, is I would put the number of degrees over the number of radians and I would create a proportion. So I would say, okay, they told me that 360 degrees is two pi radians. So I'll set that part up, that's just given. And then I don't know the number of degrees that I'm solving for, but I do know 13 pi over 12 is the amount of radians. And it doesn't bother me that it's a fraction because I know how to get rid of fractions. And even if it's a fraction within a fraction, right, I would multiply both sides by 13 pi over 12. That would cross the whole thing out here. And if I did the same thing here, well, multiplying a fraction by a fraction is really convenient because now it's just, all right, multiply the tops, multiply the bottoms. The only thing I would do differently here is I would maybe reduce, get rid of the pies, they're gonna cancel out. Um, maybe get rid of the two, turn that into a 180. And then, yeah, at this point, I could probably divide by 12 in my head, but at this point I would just do 13 times 180 is that 2340 again, and divide by 12. And again, I'm gonna get that, oop, don't need that. I'm gonna get that D is 195. Ooh, let's make sure that looks like a five, 195. So that's, that's your answer. Um, yeah, radians are annoying because they seem way more complicated than they are. I would just say, remember that they give you that conversion in the reference chart. So it's not something you need to memorize. Uh, it, it's definitely faster if you memorize the formulas that like you learned in school, but I always found those formulas kind of confusing. So for me, it, I always kind of default to the ratios that I set up here. It just makes me feel more confident. And since we're always afraid of making careless mistakes, um, do whatever kind of gets you to your answer in a way that you know you're doing the right thing.